The battle rages between British colonial troops and an alliance of Native American tribes. Two-thirds of the Redcoats die. Of the officers, only one remains. He becomes the specific target of the sharpshooting braves. Thirteen times the order is given to shoot him down. Twice the horse is shot out from under him. Eventually the order to kill him is withdrawn, for the natives recognize that he is a favorite of heaven, protected by the Great Spirit. After the battle, the British officer removes his cloak to discover not one, not two, but four bullet holes. Yet he has not a single mark on his skin. He too acknowledges that the hand of God protected him. In later years, he would become the commanding general of the Continental Army and the first president of the United States. Today, we honor George Washington with a single unadorned obelisk that rises to a height of almost 556 feet. It towers above the DC landscape and it is one of the tallest structures in the world. It was modeled after the Egyptian obelisk, a four-sided monolithic pillar standing upright and capped in a pyramid. Both the obelisk and the pyramid were sacred constructions to the Egyptians. Built by slaves, adorned with magic spells, and maintained by cultic priests, it was said they contained sacred mysteries which would transform the men they honored into gods. As impressive in construction and design as these stone monuments may be, in the end, they rise to remember those who were, after all, merely mortal. The Hebrew slave Joshua was no stranger to Egyptian monuments. His blood and sweat had gone into the very bricks from which pyramids rose. He was a laborer, not a soldier, much less a commander. Yet when the ragtag Hebrew camp of former slaves was attacked by the Amalekite army, Joshua was the one chosen to lead the defense. He had no military strategy. As long as Moses' arms were raised in prayer, Joshua was strong. More importantly, he was victorious. At the end of the battle, Moses raised an honorary stone. It was not a monument to memorialize Joshua. It was an altar, a sacrificial monument dedicated to Jehovah Nissi, the Lord is my banner, the one true God, the real victor of the battle. To Joshua came not the honor to be remembered, but the challenge to remember. Why Joshua? Why not the entire nation of Israel? Why not Moses, their spiritual leader? Why Joshua? Because the people of Israel were prone to forgetting. Because Joshua, not Moses, would ultimately lead Israel into the Promised Land. Because Joshua was to be more than a military leader. He was to be the spiritual memory for a nation that easily forgot their God. We too are called to be spiritual memories the Apostle Paul and Peter refer to the body of believers as living sacrifices and living stones, sacred constructions that honor the Lord. In a world that easily forgets, we are to be stones of remembrance, monuments bearing witness to the power and the promises of God. The challenge lies before us, not to be remembered, but to be stones of remembrance, rising past our own achievements and successes by humbly pointing others to the one true immortal God.